Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and in this tutorial I'll be going over my workflow of using the Subtractive Mesh Kit to create sci-fi floor paneling. Um, starting off with a couple of whip shots, uh, just to kind of show um, what my results were. Um, as you can see, I'm working on becoming less crazy about it. So, with that aside, on the last episode of Modeling Ball Z. Alright, just kidding. But in the uh, patron exclusive chapter, I went over the process of actually building this subtractive mesh element. So if that's something that you're interested in, then go ahead and um, you know check me out over on Patreon. However, it isn't about that. It is about using this kit. So that initial video was actually sped up by like 1,800%. It's like an hour compressed into like 30 seconds or 10 seconds or something. But um, starting out, I just put a couple of loops in here and beveled the tips. However, you want to apply the scale so the bevel comes out even. Then from there, you want to go into vertex mode and take these verts that get pushed down and bring them back up and snap. And now we have a square base with a rounded shape on top. Uh, this was something um, I noticed recently in um, some of Vitelli's work and thought it was a uh, interesting idea. Um, just having these uh, almost square panels that connect to each other um, while also having a square base for them to uh, have you know underneath as a foundation um, might have been the missing the missing piece of my previous attempts with the uh, in test so you know um, if you're not familiar with the way I am you know um, you know I have a Pinterest board called the next level that literally is all the things I aspire to wish to do you know so if you're on that list watch out it means I'm studying you so I'll turn on smooth give it an angle of 30 that'll uh, you know make it look nice and we'll just select pieces bring it over and stick it on the top select the piece select the base mirror it to the other side using the mirror mirror tool that comes with introduction of ZBrush I mean, uh, blending away to paint and introduction to ZBrush for Blender users or introduction to Blender for ZBrush users. Um, if you're wanting that, that just basically allows you to quickly mirror things on the other side of other things. So after mirroring it, I just select that, select the, um, the main piece and control minus. Um, the goal here is to, you know, bake this stuff into maps that can be used for low poly assets. However, the uh, creation process is the one that kind of takes it out of me especially you know going into Indu, going into Photoshop going into Substance Painter coming back here rendering it waiting forever on a render um, you know I would much rather just plug these shapes in and just see how they work now this little do that I particularly enjoyed um, however there was a small issue with overlapping elements um, that caused a small glitch with this um, you'll see it here in a moment when I cut it in there um, where it doesn't appear and with this sort of stuff you know you can move it around a little bit and it'll, it'll, it'll show up and you just gotta find that magic spot in which it doesn't uh, exploit your poor bevel distancing so this is something that uh, I ended up going back and uh, fixing I think at the end here um, but you know it's just one of those uh, experiences uh, a lot of people write me and they're like hey I'm having issues with the bull tool um, it's not working as as anticipated and you know I just remind people that you got to make sure that the um, the butter isn't denser than the knife or else um, who's cutting who this piece here also very awesome um, you know just a little cut and boom grates the greatest grates are cut in there I particularly love that piece and so even with these, you know, the um, series of circles, um, all I have to do with these is just place them where I want, cut them in there. They also have a nice bevel. And one, two, three, boom. Now, you see that I can move this stuff around after the fact, but because everything is so crazy, it just gets slow. Um, I distinctly remember this being faster in previous versions of Blender. However, it's really not anything I'm terribly concerned with, except for the parts where I have to move stuff around because it is a horrently slow. Um, but that pretty much is the workflow in action. 
So as I go through this, uh, I plan on extending this kit out and adding even more subtractive elements to it along with templates that'll um, serve as uh, level guides and you can basically you know cut up some um, create your your sci-fi squares and then snap them into pre-built shapes to create a level in your own style but of a unique um, of a preset you know shape which if that doesn't make any sense you'll see very shortly this piece right here is pretty great I'm just saying um, you just bring it in there cut down and it is suddenly a, uh, a depression in the shape and you know in action all it shows is just a surface transition which are some of the nicest things to have you know reading on your your normal map but I look at it a lot from the top because I want to make sure that there's a rounded bevel uh, at the bottom of everything so that way you know I'm, I'm trying to think about it like a uh, like a ray like a baking ray and keep everything uh, capable of both being baked and transferred to the map now in this particular video I don't go over the um, the baking process that is something um, that I'll probably be doing later for the um, patrons just to show the ending of this however I did want to, you know, drop a freebie just to, you know, show you guys what I'm up to and to maybe give you all some ideas. Now, any smart man can go through and just build a subtractive mesh kit by just going around the net and looking at shapes that they wish they had. I mean, it's literally that easy. And also, I find that this is a good way to uh, build up an interesting shape library in my head while also, um, you know, practicing hard surface design. Um, you know the first couple of pieces I put up I believe people were saying that you know there were just too noisy too much detail too much stuff going on and as a result it um, made it a little hard to understand visually but we look at this in the render it looks good I even have a uh, invisible ground plane underneath um, that's catching the shadows which also comes with the scene um, right there I selected a face shift G normal isolated only certain normal facing faces and by doing that I can actually select pieces individually and voila just instantly give that because of all the cut lines it allows for easier separation so this is definitely something that um, I can't stress enough that you should experiment with um, this part of the process even makes it where if I had to UV unwrap these painful pieces I could actually hi highlight things by the normals, put seams around it, and it would lay it out in the um, most perfect possible way that you can get for something this painful. Also experiment a little bit with the scale, however, I'm trying to keep everything of the same size. But you know, all in all, I consider this piece a success. Around this time, um, I was pretty impressed with the result and speed and was uh, quite proud of it. Now here's another thing is sometimes your cuts will create ingons and in order to fix it you just want to make sure that you have enough of an edge flow to determine it and then all I do is just select the ingons and turn them into triangles to make that part read smooth and proper. So that's something you just want to keep in mind like I look over these forms quite a bit um, you know afterwards and just make sure that everything is reading the way it's supposed to because if it's not um, things will get a little tricky and you, you don't want to realize way later that you did not build your model properly um, or that you have um, you know nasty end guns that don't have correct face shapes existing um, this is something I think I went over in the original bull tool videos where I was um, discussing ingons and basically showing that an ingon is a polygon that doesn't quite know what shape it is unless it's planar if it's planar it knows what it is but if you move any of the verts um, around up and down it, it, it quickly loses its shape and becomes something crazy which is why whenever you triangulate it it suddenly becomes some sort of pointy nipple um, now if you're using Moto you probably have Mesh Fusion so you know you already have an easier time ahead of you. Um, another thing is using the bull tool like this without collapsing all these damn modifiers makes it slightly slow. However 
the speed it takes to cut these things in there is still way faster and easier than if I were to try to cut it in there using other means. So that's something that is important to probably keep in mind. You know, if you're wondering why don't you just model this stuff, well, why don't you just model this stuff? I do not want to model this stuff, but I do want it. I just don't want to model it, if you know what I'm saying. So, continuing on, you know, I'll uh, take this object and probably put the origin to geometry so I can Alt-G put it back in the center and bring it up and cut it in. I was trying to move it up to Z on top view. As you see, that's uh, silly. I try to do it and I realize I put the piece all the way up in the sky. So I bring it back down. Boop. And we just take that, move it down over here, and get it just flushed because of the uh, bevels at the top. Have it share the same materials. And I'll even go in here and select pieces and give them a different material. Now what's cool about this is you can actually assign materials and UVs to pieces that you're cutting in and those pieces will in turn be sent over into the other shape. The other thing is you can also use vertex colors and cut vertex colors into other shapes which is unusual behavior you know when I first noticed it I thought I was seeing a glitch the greatest glitch ever. So you see pretty much every time I cut it in there it just gets a little bit slower um, just because of the complexity involved here like I'm pretty sure that this is not what they thought you would be using booleans for you know this is like a combo attack of like 20 booleans at once in fact I'm pretty sure in the next video I'll come back talking about um, you know rules of thumb or something on you know maybe using a maximum of five pieces or six or whatever because you know it does look a little noisy you know, I admit it but like I said, these are just demonstrations of you know what this tool offers. So as you see, these are ingons. There's no flow. So select the normal, shift H to hide the alternate. We will give this a different material color because it's a manifold face selection. Give this one a different color selection because it is also a manifold face selection no matter how ugly it is. So for things like this, as long as you keep it fairly planar, you at least have that additional level of control to be able to use to your advantage. And so the render size is something that changes quite a bit throughout this. However, that part isn't even relevant. Um, you know, I usually render things at a fairly decent resolution, then just ramp it to 150 or uh, yeah, 150 or 200 percent in order to get additional detail out of that. So there's a lot of people who tell me that they didn't know that you could actually set the resolution to more than 100% of what it is. You know, if you're ballsy, try rendering out your model at 1000% of the default resolution. You'll see detail you never knew was there, but also your resolution is going to be about a thousand times bigger. So you live and you learn. Now, with that this piece is fairly complete you know I was looking at it and thinking you know that's like a futuristic hard drive you know so maybe I should make a piece that's actually more like a floor however you know I was making these panels and thinking you know this this would be the third one on the wall you know it'd be like duck duck goose you know with these pieces so I'm also thinking of their applications at the same time um, another interesting tidbit is I could literally take this piece and cut this piece into another cube which will yield some rather interesting results um, so now we're on to part two uh, part two I went ahead and just selected pieces and brought them over to a duplicate of the initial shell this is the same shell that I used for the baking or actually I think I use a more simple version it's actually a, a cube in the exact shape and I start off with my favorite little grill, dig it in there, it comes out fast. Uh, take this piece, this piece is a legend. Now clipping the edges of this is, um, in, my, in my opinion, uh, dangerous. You know, I'm going to say the word dangerous like you're 
going to get your door kicked in, beaten to death by police officers over doing this. But you know what I mean. Um, this piece here, also a fan favorite, me being the fan of myself, which is weird, but continuing on, you will just bring this up, scale it, and mirror it to the other side, boop, and cut it in, control numpad minus, and wait. Now you see the time is a double of what it was for that first piece. And so these things are especially awesome. This piece right here, one of my favorites. Um, stolen straight out the pages of the V-Man himself. Um, when I noticed the subtractive shape that was used here, it suddenly made it clear on what I have to do to my future generations of robots and their children's children, provided that my robots have children, on what I gotta do with them. This piece right here, also a very interesting piece. Um, I try to mirror it. Now the mirror tool is weird. Control M is the mirror. And sometimes the mirror is there, sometimes the mirror is not there. I don't know why the mirror disappears, but it does. Um, so every other version, it's there. But I'm starting to think that there's a glitch that is causing me to not be able to get the damn mirror at times. So it just drives me crazy. Anytime the mirror is not working, I just SX negative 1. If you S, X, S, Y, S, Z, negative 1, you're actually flipping your mesh inside out on the other side of a dimension. So that means once you apply the scale, the normals are flipped. Therefore, you must apply the scale, flip your normals. So just keep that in mind as a Blender user. I'm not sure if that behavior is the same thing in Maya, but it is definitely a Blender thing. This piece right here, this clip Primero El Luchadore Grande. This piece right here is awesome. Um, however, I was testing out the idea of using it like in an angle of just just cutting it in there and um, seeing if that'll give me a nice little ridge like you could uh, unscrew and flip this door up or whatever. And I thought that that looked pretty cool. Now to be honest, this is probably the point in which I probably should have just uh, went down one more level of detail and started putting in like itty bitty notches and stuff like that. However, I'm still excited about this kit, so I just keep cutting things in there, even though um, it is getting slightly noisy. So, you know, if you decide to try this yourself, definitely, um, sometimes less is more. Sometimes, sometimes it is, but not all the time, not when you're eating. Speaking of which, I had went somewhere to get, somewhere to get something to eat, and was like, how much is a, uh, a Big Mac and fries? They told me a number, and then I was like, well, how much is it for a Big Mac and small fries? Shows how poor I am. And they were like, yeah, same price. So I walked out. It's like, that's a logic error. Also, I think you're all ripping me off. But, you know, so that in, in those cases, less is also more. So, just to bring that example home. Also, I shouldn't be eating at McDonald's. But, let's, uh get back to the tutorial here edge clips are also important they show that you know someone can just come in with a screwdriver and just pop this floor up and take it out of here you know if I was in the future and I was some sort of side thug I would just still sci-fi floors you know out, out the corridor you know it'd be like where'd you get these floors in your room from you know that looks like the landing bay it's like this is the bay where I land all right so you leave me alone so we cut into it and we wait a minute and we wait another minute and you know near the end this started to get pretty crazy long so you know less is more is definitely the uh, way to go when it comes to approaching the stuff So now we're going to take these pieces, this one here is a nice little doodad, however I made the mistake of unhiding everything, which was uh, possibly silly, and we're just going to bring this piece down and clip it into the side. Boop.
All right, so now we got our bolt. And with this bolt, we'll just duplicate around, keeping it important to get the rounded top so we have that um, normal information to read. Um, you won't see me doing any uh, normal reading on this. However, um, in the bake test, it, it, it worked. I, I tested it last night just to um, see how it would act if I just you know went and all did a little bake two and uh, go from there. And I was actually quite pleased with the results. In fact, um, in the end, I could say that a normal map is not good enough for this. A height map, however, is. And a vector displacement map will definitely get you the uh, results that you want. However, um, regular displacement is, is the name of the game here. I'm not going <laughs> to start talking about VD. Um, not talking about venereal diseases. Um, so we cut in there, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait. You see a pattern here? And so this piece is pretty much almost done. You know, I've, I pretty much have noised it way too far. And so it doesn't matter. We're just going to just put this on the other side and continue on with this. This piece right here is particularly cool because it not only cuts in the, the, uh, Sorry, a loss of words here, reading stupid Facebook comments. Um, I'm at a loss of words, um, but here we go. It cuts into buckles, and then it also cuts in the edge trim that gives that um, button or buckle some credence. Now, this piece here is still being a little troublemaker. However, I still love it and wish to treat it like like it was my own. So, And it, and it was. You know, I did make it. Um, and we cut it in there, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and guess what? It's probably not going to get cut in there. Oh, and it did. However, look at that ingon hole that it created. Now, that's something that I could go back and fix. However, I did not want to go through that. In fact, You'll, you'll see me try to fix it and play with it for a minute. Blender will start freezing a little bit because of all the modifiers at the same time. So we're just going to take a different clip. And no holds barred. Except for this hole at the top. So we'll just grid fill it. Which grid fill will fill any hole that has a symmetrical amount of that um, even number of vertices. Doesn't work for uneven I mean you could always just press F and control F or uh, F and control T to uh, fill it with a phase and then convert it to a triangle which a triangle is like you know filling that geo whatever I don't care what you do just figure out the best answer so you bring in our little dig hooks and we wait and we wait and voila so now this piece is actually looking pretty good so I'll convert it to a mesh And I'll select this and this and the floor, select everything else and move it to layer zero. And now where there was once one, there is now two. And even with this uh, auto smooth on the side, I can set the uh, auto smooth angle to like 22 and smooth it and actually get smooth surfaces, smooth transitions that everything above 22 uh, degrees or below will, will be um, split on the normal, which is also very handy. Now, I um, also want to throw in here in a hard surface tutorial where it's completely irrelevant that I'm working on a, um, a redo for the, not a redo, but an updated version of my hair tutorial where I'll be uh, kind of showing some of the techniques on making hair work better in Marmoset using, um, using the um, data transfer attribute in Blender to get the anastropy to go the right direction which is important for making low poly hair. Um, if you've ever used particle hair, you know, you know it takes forever. Um, so low poly hair sometimes can be a slightly better choice. So continuing on here, where you look at this thing rendering, and it's, it's a beaut. It's a beaut. And so that'll wrap up this particular chapter. But I go through and I make four of these things. So um, we'll make one more here. You know, so starting out here with the next piece, 
uh, in between in, in between the recordings, I just duplicated and moved it over. Just got it ready for you guys. Let it render 400 cycles. Um, this piece here, I decided I wanted to add one more piece to my collection, so I start off beveling the bottom, and then I come through and I bevel the sides. Um, this shape here is um, pretty pretty interesting in my opinion. Like it's uh, one of my one of my favorite shapes. Um, one of the things I probably should have done to begin with was assign materials to my subtractive mesh kit before I started cutting them in there and that way the texturing process would already be done. In fact, the color assignments that I do in Blender, I'll bake it to an ID mask and use that in Substance Painter to do the initial material layout which just rocks. It's so fast. And that's kind of what brought me to this is, um, you know, usually I do a tutorial whenever I um, you know, get the hang of something that uh, is relatively interesting or what I perceive to be interesting. You know, I'm into robots and stuff. People write me and they're like, why aren't you doing organic stuff? You know, you can F yourself. Do lots of organic stuff. You know, I spent like two weeks recently just sculpting humans uh, to try to get better at it because I don't want to be only hard surface. And, you know, I'll, I'll be back with something on that later, but, you know, I try to make sure that I'm not just um, you know posting garbage like I'd hate to make videos that are worthy of being skipped over because they don't teach anything relevant or new so you know and whenever I'm making a video it's because hey um, good news everyone you know and just going from it at that angle um, to try to keep these as a uh, you know quality videos so this piece here the piece I've affectionately called little troublemaker we'll move it over and dig it in and didn't work so we tap into edit mode tab out didn't work so I'm just gonna remove it just just go and we're just not gonna use that one I'm gonna actually fix that one um, in fact yeah we're in, it's still not to the part where I fixed it eventually I just get mad and I just fix it but just know that overlapping geometry caused by unaware beveling or beveling without scale will cause that to happen. And you just don't want that to happen. So this one also is the uh, final one I'll be uh, modeling in this particular video. If you're interested in the continuation of this, just know that um, it is a patron reward that you can sign up for. I even made a chapter in there's a book that I'm writing called uh, Hard Surfaces or a uh, Hard Time or Hard Surface Hard Surfaces and even Harder Times. A Hard Surface Guides Modeling with Master Xeon One Zero Zero One. Damn, that is a tongue twister. Uh, sorry about that. But basically, if you're interested in getting it, um, it also is going to be um, this whole kit will be part of the uh, asset massive. I mean uh, the um, Asset Collection Volume 1, which will be mentioned in the description below. But the book that I was talking about is um, basically on hard surface modeling. I just wanted to go over tips and tricks just in a variety of different packages on just making certain shapes happen uh, based off of tips I've received over time and working with uh, different professionals. And I've gotten a lot of input from a lot of um, different people on different directions to take it. So this book is evolving. You know, originally it started out as me just making some rants in Microsoft, eh, not Microsoft Word, uh, just this program writer, uh, which is um, open office. Um, and now I'm you know, designing the pages in InDesign and trying to make it into something that is um, a more interesting product. So that way you'll be glad to um, read it and you know, get, get this information. But you know, um, I believe I mentioned in my previous videos that I am pretty, pretty big on utilizing time wisely um, you know like I always ask people I'm like uh, you know how do you utilize your potty time you know are you reading you know like uh, you know me personally whenever I'm dealing with potty related matters you know I'm usually reading or you know playing game or going through tutorials or whatever or remoted into my computer or something but you know, even your time away from the computer in which you're forced to um, be around people or watch movies that are boring or whatever the case may be, you can always utilize that time to catching up on 3D Artist Magazine or just, um, you know, getting more knowledgeable 
about your stuff but I mean usually when it comes to tutorials I only watch tutorials when I first wake up uh, just to kind of wake me up and get me excited about uh, the work ahead um, usually I find that sometimes after watch tutorials I'll get pretty uh, pretty psyched about you know 3d in general and I'll just take that energy and put it towards whatever it is that I'm modeling but that high enthusiasm is something that I try to use to my control to um, keep keep my energy you know going in this field so with that all aside like I said um, the, the prequel chapter on the kit as long as well as the source files and the subtractive mesh kit are all patron only rewards uh, as well as uh, part of the asset pack and you know otherwise you could screen cap it right here like a smart guy and make this stuff and make better stuff and just do it yourself you know that's the type of guy I am you know I'll see it I'll see someone's parts and you know the first thought that comes to my head is uh, you know your soul is mine because I am literally going to study you and absorb your soul and gain a better understanding of the stuff that you're making here so that's kind of the approach that I have in fact if you know me on social media you'll see me you know randomly comment on awesome projects being like hey man what size shirt you wear you know what's your diet because I'm going to become you that's how much I admire whatever it is that I'm looking at and that's that's the enthusiasm I try to carry with me but you know in recent times I've been going through some tough things that have um, you know weighed heavily on my ability to have more um, morale as a 3d artist so right now I'm kind of fighting to come back and you know keep my my wits uh, I mean not my wits my my enthusiasm going because you know 3d is a very hard field and you know when the times get tough you can't help but wonder hey if I get into the right field because I can guarantee you if I was in any other field I would already be done like but 3d is just a lifetime of learning you're just learning forever and ever in fact it, it, it never ends the moment you stop learning the moment you become irrelevant it's like hey did you hear about this new program no because I'm stuck using this program from 1935 you know so I don't want to be that type of guy I always want to be on the cutting edge you know um, it's like sitting around house and playing uh, you know Super Nintendo you know I could be just sitting around the house playing Super Nintendo but instead I'd rather be playing the latest gen latest console because who knows maybe they made things better that time so you know with that small rant aside that had nothing to do with this tutorial I'll go ahead and just take the side clip duplicate it and cut and so that piece is there so we'll take this piece here duplicate it And put it at the base. Uh, I see that having these these transitions happen on the edges just instantly creates seriousness. Like you know, what kind of floor is this? Um, and you're gonna see me take this to spaceships and armor and all sorts of things. But at the end, the goal is to end up walking away with clean geometry. And it's not that hard. You know, just the workflow alone that um, of baking this and then cleaning it up a little bit saves me on quite a bit of time. So right now we're going to wait for this. And that cut is complete. And we'll take this and cut it right here into the side. So I want to come back and probably also do another video expanding on this uh, for you YouTube guys. However, um, this kit is definitely going to expand. Now there's already kits I've made in the past for subtractions and I plan on just going through and uh, locating some of their parts and maybe absorbing the ones that are interesting. But you know, really this is something that anyone should do. I mean, you know, find out what your shape library is, but more importantly, build a couple of pieces duplicate those pieces, modify those pieces, 
and then take pieces, combine them with other pieces, cut into those pieces using subsequent pieces, and you'll find yourself surrounded by uniques very quick. Now you see on this particular shape that I'll use the, um, the piece I call the, uh, the hook sled um, to basically slide down an area where it can nicely transition. Like I'm already looking at this thing and thinking, ouch, it would hurt if I had to lay these slabs in there and my finger got caught in there. Um, but luckily that's something that I don't even have to worry about with this video. Now it looks like I've been you know, talking nonstop for about half an hour. So the last segment we will, I will spare you guys on. However, I do hope that y'all enjoy this video and definitely give this workflow a try. In fact, you know, even if you don't want to make floors, you should try making something even more complex like a, a kiosk. Using a kiosk and using a subtraction kit on it would turn the work of, you know, making it into something more complex and futuristic. It would turn that into a task done in minutes. Um, you know, I can't stress this enough that, you know, speed is is one of the the main things that matter to me because you know I never know when the next time I'll get to come back and finish these projects out will be so I try to get as much done at, at one time it's like you know even with the stuff I envision you know it's always a, a fleeting moment um, so you got to be quick at getting your ideas out there because who knows if you get some crazy idea for a project and that idea is still clear a week later you know, sometimes an idea will stick with me for, for years, and sometimes it'll just be just a second, just a sentence. Like, I got this idea, sentence, it's gone, it's evaporated, never returning it. Also, always play with the looks a little bit just to, um, you know, really get my contrasting gamma just, just right. But I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and happy blunders.